Shalom, everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati. I'm live from Athens, Greece. I wish I could show you the view outside, but I really can't. It's so uh, hot and the angle of the sun won't really show anything right now. So I actually closed the curtains in order to get a better uh, picture on video. And I wanted to give you uh, some breaking news. Look, it's something that happened a few days ago, but only now, finally, the details are allowed to be shared. And it's only because a Turkish newspaper spilled the beans, and now everybody is saying what really was supposed to happen on the night between the 16th and the 17th of June. So just about uh, a week ago, something very big happened. And uh, remember I told you that uh, the Israeli Mossad t uh, tipped the uh, or tapped the uh, um, Turkish secret services of a plot to kill Israelis in Istanbul. Well, the plot thickens, and it's way more than just a plot to kill someone. Folks, um, in Iran, over the last few weeks, quite a few key people in the Revolutionary Guards Corps died uh, in a very mysterious way. Some of them were poisoned, some of them were pushed from the rooftop, some of them, their car uh, uh, assassination squad came and shot them while they were in their car. They lost quite a few people in their nuclear program, whether it's program that has to do with, uh, uh, you know, scientific part in Iran or other things. But bottom line is, Within the Revolutionary uh, Guards, there it was the main head of intelligence, Hussein um, Taib. Hussein Taib. And uh, this guy, um, actually, he didn't even wear uniforms. Um, and apparently, there's a power struggle uh, within the Revolutionary Guards and, uh, and within the regime. He really looked very bad when so much has happened on Iranian soil and he had no way to thwart it, detect it, stop it, or, you know, do something or even know about it. And so in order to somehow show some good performance and in order to somehow bring about some results to the Iranian regime, he's the one who ordered the assassination squad in Istanbul to operate. We're talking about 10 people, of which uh, some uh, were on student visas, some disguised to be businessmen, and all of them belong to the either Iranian intelligence or the Al-Quds force, which is the force within the IRGC that's supposed to export the revolution of Iran's Islamic Shiite uh, agenda to the rest of the world. And if you remember, President Trump is the one who ordered the assassination of the head of Al-Quds force, General Qasem Soleimani, if you remember that. Now, what happened is this. We did not wait for the Turks to find out anything. We, we are having our eyes and ears tapped on the communication between Tehran and its um, messengers. The Israeli Mossad found out two things. And listen to, the, listen to me right now. This is important that you understand what I'm about to say. The former ambassador of Israel to Turkey and his wife stayed in a beautiful hotel in one of the nicest neighborhoods in Istanbul. Again, the former ambassador of Israel to Turkey and his wife, alongside with other Israeli diplomats that were there and alongside with other Israeli businessmen that were around. They were the target. The Iranians already had weapons, plans, vehicles, and what they were about to do is kidnap the ambassador and kill Israeli um, businessmen and civilians. 
Now listen to what happened. When we found out that they are about to act, we of course alerted the Turks that this assassination squad is on its way, but Israel did not wait for the Turks to operate. The Israeli Mossad agents, I know it sounds uh, like a fantasy, it sounds like a, some sort of a thriller book. This is reality, what, what happened a week ago in Istanbul. Israeli Mossad agents made it to the hotel rooms of the targets of the Israeli businessmen, diplomats, and the former ambassador, extracted them from their hotel rooms seconds, not minutes, seconds before the uh, assassination squad made it to their room. Folks, not only that they extract them, but they drove them immediately to an airport where they loaded them on a private jet straight to Israel. So we're talking about, A, intelligence to find out that plot. Two, alerting the Turks that something is going on so the Turks will allow us to operate. Three, rushing to make it before the Iranians to the hotel rooms, extracting people, sometimes in their bed, getting them out seconds before the Iranians. Look, we could not. We could not uh, show the Iranians that we know what they're doing because they could have swapped the plan. Else would have done something else somewhere else. So we wanted to let them think that they are about to do it and it's, they're going to be successful. Literally seconds before, we extracted them out of the hotel from the back door to a van to a local airport in private jet back to Israel. And when the Iranian assassination squad made it to the room, it was empty. And that's when the Turkish security forces arrested them, 10 of them. Now, over the last week, we talked about it and the Iranians, of course, denied it. They said, no, we don't do anything. We are not violating Turkish sovereignty. We're not, you know, this is not going to happen. The minute the Turkish newspaper, the name of the newspaper is Milyet, Milyet. The minute this story came out today on the Turkish Milyet newspaper, immediately the head of the intelligence, Hussein um, Taib, was removed and a new person uh, was uh, promoted and his name is Hus uh, his name is um, um, Kadami, Muhammad Kadami. So, Hussein Taib was removed. Some people think that, that he's in a hospital, somebody tried to kill him. And um, Muhammad Kadami was promoted now to be the head of... Now, all of that I tell you right now, I report that all the time on my Telegram channel. So, if you have not done that so far, download Telegram Messenger, Follow me, Amir Tsarfati. You've got 275,000 uh, subscribers, and you will get nonstop news that you get we won't see anywhere else. Again, drama in Istanbul. Not only that, Israel seconds before the assassination squad made it to a hotel room to kill a former U Israeli ambassador to Turkey and his wife. Seconds before it happened, the Israeli Mossad agent broke in, extracted him, put him in a van, flew him straight to Israel in a private jet. The Iranians made it, found out that it's empty, and that's when they were arrested by the Turks, who were alerted by us. At the same time, the drama continues in Iran, because now the, <laughs> the Iranian regime is embarrassed. The whole plot was unveiled. And now the head of the intelligence, uh, Hussein Taib, was removed from his office. And Muhammad Kaddami is now promoted by Hussein Salami, the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. And now that's, that's what happened. Folks, there's much more that is going on that I cannot reveal to you right now. More people are dying on the streets of Tehran. Uh, you know what? Let me share with you at least what I did post today, so, so you know. 
um, another assassination of a member of the Revolutionary Guard. This assassination f took place a few days ago in, is, uh, in the Mohsen, Mohsenian Street, located in the third district of Tehran. So again, the problem that the Iranians have right now is that Israeli Mossad is on the streets of Tehran, on the phone line of the Iranians, and on the streets of Istanbul to foil Iranian plots against us. Phenomenal. Crazy. It's out of, I guess, thriller, thriller books, but these are, this is the reality. And that's why when I write fiction thrillers, like the one that is coming out soon, and it's called By Ways of Deception, it's based on true events. It's not, I don't make up stories. I just add things to add the gospel to it. But the stories are true. The way they operate is exactly the way things are in reality. And you've got to understand so much is going on behind the scenes. And the Iranians are with their back to the wall. A lot is going on also in Europe. In uh, UK, the inflation rate there is reaching a 40 years high. Inflation in America. And of course, Mohammed bin Salman is now wrapping up a visit to Egypt, Jordan, and Turkey as a, the great victor. Remember, after <laughs> both the US and Turkey held him responsible personally for the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, the, the uh, Turkish journalist in the uh, Turkish uh, consulate in Istanbul. After they smeared him and after they ousted him and after they said, we'll never talk to him, we'll never meet with him. Now everybody wants to deal with him because reality is coming to visit and it's no longer human rights and ideology. Now it's interests, shared interests. Turkey is now welcoming him. Erdogan not only welcomed MBS, he even, the farewell ceremony, he even walked him up to his plane, upstairs, all the way into his plane. That's, that's something that Erdogan never does. So you can clearly see that the Ukraine war, what's going on in Russia, the energy thing is now uh, like a cloud above the Middle East and above Europe and the U.S. And that is dictating a completely different type of politics. And remember, I've been saying that for at least 15, 20 years, Ezekiel war is about that energy and it's about that interest. It's a war that will come against Israel, not for political or religious things, it's for energy. That's the hook in the jaw of Rosh. Again, breaking news, drama in the streets of, 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 of Istanbul and Tehran. A lot has happened. Share these breaking news with as many as you can. Follow me on, messen on, on Telegram Messenger, Amir Tsafati, 275,000 subscribers. That's the only channel. Don't follow any other channel that has my name because it's a fake one. Amir Salfati, 275,000 subscribers. It's the only one, okay? And uh, hey, uh, thank you. Uh, we are receiving our guests right now of the Footsteps of Paul tour and cruise. We're going to start tomorrow with the Acropolis in Athens. The day after tomorrow, we're going to visit Thessaloniki. The day after, we do uh, Corinth, and then we board the boat to do the Isles, including Patmos, Ephesus, and others. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Share these breaking news and uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.